Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with another point of view video. And the cool thing about this video is I'm not going to do really any cutting. I, I guess I do a little cutting at the end, but I'm going to walk you through a color technique. This is taking one of my guests named Kit, who's been coming to me for a long time. We normally do a single, uh, single color touch up. Sometimes we throw some highlights in there, but this time we're going to do a single color. Uh, so just a quick touch up but then we're gonna go in and create an ombre effect to her hair color. So hope you guys enjoy this video. It's something a little bit different. What I like to do um, with most of my guests, you can see Kit has a little bit of root uh, regrowth in there. So I'm gonna go in and touch off her hair. We're using a level seven, kind of a warm copper uh, color. Kit likes a little bit warmer red tone to her hair. So we're gonna go through and touch that up. What you'll notice is as I go through, I, I basically took a parting right out where she parts her hair, and then I brought that all the way into the, the nape of the neck in the back. And I'm gonna go through and just separate both sides of the head from uh, the right and left. So we're going through just using that level seven color, touching up the base, uh, real simple here. So we'll do both sides. And then that gives me a good separation, and that's kind of why I like doing it this way. And then I can work on one side, and then I can go to the other side and work. Um, you could do this in your four quadrants if you want to. Um, this obviously is not a technical part of, of this process. It's just getting that touch-up on. I will pull, you'll see some of the, the touch-up I pull through a little bit more. Uh, we want this to be kind of an organic feel to the color, so I'm not trying to make everything perfect. Um, now I'm going to go through horizontally and just finish up the touch up. So I'm not going to show you this whole process. We're going to speed it up in a second, uh, skip ahead a little bit. Most of you guys know how to do a touch up now. So um, just, but yeah, this is a basic way. This is how I like to do it. Separate the two sides and then just work horizontally up. It just keeps me nice, nice and organized and clean. All right, now we just skip ahead to the front. The reason I want to show you the front in this part is that for for the most part throughout the whole technique, I was just going about two inches down from, from the scalp. Um, and now you'll see me kind of feather through a little bit more. I really want to pull through uh, some of that color because if you look at Kit's base color, it's probably a level five, around a level five. So that level seven color is going to lift her, um, you know, to, a, to probably to a level six, possibly a seven, but we're gonna stay probably around a level six. I only use 20 volume, I'm not trying to lift her too high. And I really wanna pull out some of that warmth in her natural uh, hair that's gonna happen anyways. So, um, so her base is gonna start out around a level six. Then if I pull some of that color through the mid shaft, it's already a little bit lighter, so it's gonna take on that level seven. So we're already creating that ombre feel, starting with our level six at the base, into the level seven, into the level eight, and that's what you want is a gradual uh, work through and then really light pop at the end. So um, you'll see me, that's why I feather some of the color through, um, just because I want that kind of um, natural difference in the colors to happen. So now, basically all I'm gonna do is go through uh, Kit's hair, and while her touch-up is on processing, I'm gonna go through, take little triangle sections out. Um, I would say that I do this, uh, Similar to most people, I don't think it's a lot different, but what I like to do is really soak on the mid shaft and and then work my way up and really just kind of smooth that color in. You'll get a good look at it right here. So we'll take out a little triangle section. I'm going to do this on pretty much every bit of her hair. Um, I'm working with a 20 volume lightener. Um, this is our balayage lightener that we're selling, the Sunlight's balayage lightener. Uh, it's got a really nice consistency to it. So we're going in, um, I soak the mid shaft, and then I use my fingers to slowly work up and kind of separate that line of demarcation that would happen there. And then I paint with the brush vertically to just kind of spread that lightener up the hair shaft. And that creates a really natural feel to the color. And then at the very end, I soak on uh, the ends with some more lightener because the heavier the lightener obviously the lighter and the more saturation you're going to get with the hair so I like to soak this on work it through slide it down to the ends 
really feather on that or really put on that color. Then we're going to go through and just kind of feather it through the mid shaft, pull it to the top. And then I run my fingers through it to just smooth it out. Make sure that there's no inconsistencies. If you just leave chunky lightener on hair, it's going to get blotchy and spotty. So I really want to make sure that the consistency of the lightener on the hair shaft is smooth uh, before I move on to the next section. Again, just keep taking those triangles. Um, it's really easy technique, and I think that you know, I think the biggest difference is what you'll see with a good ombre and a bad ombre is just those little extra steps. Really working the lightener through, making sure that it's nice and smooth, and uh, not cutting corners on it. Um, it is again kind of an organic feel to the hair, but you do need to have proper placement with it as well. So I'm really working through almost every hair strand on the head and doing this same exact technique every single time. I really use my left hand a lot to make sure that I'm really working in the lightener. Um, some people like Brian like to use the paddle and stuff. I, I like using my fingers to work in the lightener. Um, it, I just feel like the consistency is easier for me and it's easier for me to not use a paddle. Um, but I like doing this technique because I think it creates a very natural look to the hair. Um, or it could be unnatural if you want it to be, but like with Kit, she's not looking to have crazy unnatural looking hair. She wants it to look like the sun kind of highlighted her ends. So um, this is a really cool way to create that effect. This will show you the sectioning that I did on the opposite side as well. I work diagonal back. It's just easy for me to make sure that I get all the hair and I can keep the hair out of the way. So we'll split that in half. I'm still pretty much working with all of the hair, um, but working diagonal back just keeps it clean and organized um, as I work through it. Again, you can see how we're just feathering uh, with using the brush vertically. Um, we're using the balayage uh, brush as well, which we have on Shop FSE. The thing I like about this brush is the bristles are really flexible. Uh, they're flexible and, and firm at the same time. It's, it's weird. They're long, so they're easy to paint and brush, but they're not really weak. So it works really well for the, for the type of hair painting that a lot of people are doing nowadays. Um, and it's a smaller brush, so it's easier to get in there and, and work those little details. Another key point with doing uh, any kind of hair painting is to make sure that you have your section completely brushed out. A lot of people will grab a bunch of hair at once and just start painting on it. It might have some tangles in there. That's where you're going to see the inconsistencies in the color and your end result. You want to make sure that that's nice and smooth. Brush it out. Uh, there's no tangles in the hair. That way you can get a s smooth surface to paint the, the color on. Nothing's changed, still working the hair or the color through the ends and then feathering it up the mid shaft. I think another good thing to do with this technique is to make sure that um, you don't go to the same spot every time. So because if you go to the same spot every time, you're going to have really light ends and it's going to get dark quick and then it's going to be dark the rest of the way up the hair. So you're going to have that kind of two-tone color to it. You really want to make sure that when you go in, you take one section, like let's say this section I'm working on now, and I paint it a little higher than I paint the rest because then you get those ups and downs throughout the look on the hair so that when you smooth out the hair, you don't see, again, the, the two-tone feel to it. Taking out those triangles, another cool thing about this 
brush is it's got kind of a pencil feel to it. So it fits really well. It's very comfortable in your hand. It's thicker. But then at the very end is a nice little pick. So you can pick out the hair and it's got a nice sharp point to it. So you can take your section. So it's really created for this type of hair coloring. Like I said before, we're going to paint every bit of this hair. Um, you could leave out some if you want to. It just depends on how much brightness you want to create. Um, but I would definitely say that uh, if you're trying to create an ombre look, you really need to do pretty much all of, all of the hair. You can see me taking a brush and brushing through it to make sure that there's no tangles in the hair as I work through. And this is a salon reality thing here. This is one of my guests in the salon. I just threw a camera on my head to do this uh, for you guys. And so you can see the whole experience of it. I tried not to edit too much. Um, you know, color gets very repetitive, so I did edit a little bit. Uh, but the, the fact is, this is very salon reality. She's got her touch up on. We're waiting for that to process. And while that's happening, this is a quick upgrade that you can add on. Um, a lot of people look at, well, maybe I could get an assistant and maybe I could double up the amount of people that I do. Well, the thing that happens with that is you lose customer service and a lot of people don't always, you, you're paying for an assistant. Maybe you don't need yet. So if you're not that booked up, this is a great add on service that a new stylist or somebody could add on instead of just sitting there waiting for that single color to process, do this technique and, and charge a little extra for it. And that's, you know, that's makes your client have something exciting going on with their hair and it makes you more money. So it's a win-win for everyone. All right. So we got all the color on. Now we're just going to let that sit and you just want to make sure you um, kind of go through it and just make sure that there wasn't any um, big chunks of color on there. We rinsed it out and now I'm going to go through and we're going to blow it dry. And I want you guys to kind of see this whole color happen and how it um, really comes to life with the blow dry. So we put on some uh, foam. This is an extra body foam from Paul Mitchell. What I'm going to do now is brush the product through the hair. So we're using the wet brush. This is my new favorite brush. I don't sell it or anything. It's just one of those brushes that um, is now my go-to. Brushes through the hair like crazy. I always thought it was kind of a gimmick and a joke, but it really is one of the best brushes I've ever used. So now I'm going to go through. I got my Ergo paddle brush that they sent me. I love it. Um, and I'm just going to do a nice little um, leafing technique and just to smooth uh, the cuticle of the hair. Then we're going to go through and round brush it a little bit. But th this way you can really see that color start to pop out. So as I brush it forward, you can see it a little bit on the ends there. But there you see right in the mid shaft how uh, the, the color starts to brighten up. And then once it gets to the ends, it just gets really nice and bright. It's great. Not sure if you can hear that in the background, but there's a nice train that runs through New Hope, and I guess it decided to do it right now. <laughs> so we're paddle brushing through. Now I got my round brush. This is my Ergo brush as well. Um, and we're going to work with high elevation. I want to create a lot of volume in this um, and just really bring out the wave and the natural feel uh, to this hair color. I don't want to make it curly. And I know a lot of people have a challenge with seeing the end result curly on an ombre. So I did it both. I did a round brush here and then I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, cut, cutting and face framing, uh, dry. And then I go through and I smooth it so you guys can actually see it smooth as well. So you can see both results, um, because a lot of people, uh, want to see an ombre and they want to see it straight and curly. So Go through, nice little round brush, letting the brush cool off, creating that little wave. Again, high elevation, that's going to give me the most volume in the hair. Um, and you're really going to see when I drop this section, 
how the ombre is, is coming about and how it looks. So you can see how that just kind of melts together. I love the copper feel uh, with the brightness on the ends. It just looks really, really nice. So again, elevating the hair. I like to, uh, Kit wears her hair to her right. So I'm round brushing everything to her left um, with high elevation. So that way, when I let it go, it's going to kick over top and create that volume on the opposite side. So I just let it sit there and cool. And then when we kick it to the other side, the way that she likes to wear it, she's going to have a lot more volume in there. Couple more pieces. You can see the technique when we're round brushing, really just keeping that brush horizontal parallel, basically keeping the blow dryer parallel with the brush. That was easy for me to say. Um, and just working through it. Now you can really see with a little bit of wave in there how shiny and just how nice. I love, the other thing I love about ombre and balayage is it just keeps the quality of the hair. When you pack it in a foil, you get too much heat in there sometimes and it just damages the, the layers of the hair. This is just beautiful, it's shiny, it really, really uh, looks nice, um, and it's an easy technique to do. So now I'm going to brush it out, I'm going to do a little bit of cutting, and then, um, and then you'll see the end result. So I'm going to tuck the left side, the weak side, around her ear, and we're just going to do, I'm going to clean up her bangs. She wanted her bangs a little bit shorter, she didn't really want to lose any length on anything. So I'm going to go through using my Mizutani Puffins. Um, and just do a slide cutting technique, tease cutting right at the bang area. So taking diagonal forward sections out of the fringe and just over directing them over the uh, left eye. It'll just give us a slight um, asymmetrical feel uh, to the fringe and it'll, it, you know, it gives it a nice side bang for our guest kit. And the higher the elevation on that, the more uh, lightweight the fringe will be. So we elevated a little bit. Kit's got nice medium, uh, medium hair. So you know she didn't. I didn't need to elevate it too much. And now I'm just matching up the other side. So just over directing everything over, giving her a little face frame. I like using the tease cutting technique because it's soft. And because she's got long hair, I'm not really trying to build any structure to it anyway. So I can just go in and do a little tease cutting and lighten up her face frame area. And there we go. You can see the end result for the most part. Um, now I'm going to show it to you straight as well. Uh, so you can see it here. You can see how that um, hair starts dark and it just moves into a lighter uh, feel. And again, the technique is easy. Just make sure that you take the nice triangle sections work through it, paint the color onto the mid shaft and then work it down to the ends and then feather it through the top. And that's really the key to it. Make sure that you're adding these little upgrades on. Your guests are going to love it and it'll make you some more money in the salon. I hope you guys like these point of view videos. Uh, we got a lot more to come. Just picked up some more tools to be able to create even cooler ones. So I uh, hope you guys are liking it. Please leave your comments below. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Free Salon Education. Uh, and yeah, we'll check you guys later. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks. <laughs>